He was the only driver I knew who never thought he'd get hurt. I mean, it is openly said that Alan Prost has quoted it many, many times. And I don't think for one minute that you know, was his downfall. It, that was overcommitment. That was overconfident. Because anyone can get hurt at any time. One particular thing that Formula One can provide you is that you know you are always exposed to danger. Danger of getting hurt, danger of dying. Many believe he remains the greatest driver to have raced in Formula One. Others considered him a flawed genius who believed he had a God-given right to win and would stop at nothing in his pursuit of victory. Ayrton Senna still continues to inspire millions 24 years after he lost his life on that fateful day in May. The Brazilian had endured a troubled start to his 1994 campaign. He was struggling to get to grips with Williams' FW16, as driving aids including active suspension and traction control had been banned, leading to cars becoming more unstable and harder to control. A spin in Brazil at the opening round and a first corner collision next time out in Aida only served to underline the pressure Senna faced heading to the season's third round in Imola. Pre-season favourite having joined reigning champions Williams from McLaren, the three-time world champion was already 20 points behind the up-and-coming young charger Michael Schumacher in the standings. Only victory in Italy would be good enough. The weekend started on a solemn note, as during Friday practice, compatriot and friend Rubens Barrichello crashed heavily at Varianta Bassa. The curbs on the right left chicane launched Barrichello's Jordan into the tyre barrier at unabated speed. The young driver was knocked unconscious and taken to the medical centre with thankfully nothing more than a broken nose and bust lip. Senna rushed to his compatriot's side, clearly worried for his welfare. But the next day, tragedy struck during qualifying. The Austrian Roland Ratzenberger crashed his Simtech heading into the Villeneuve curve at huge speed and suffered fatal injuries. He was just 33 years old. Senna commandeered a safety vehicle and went straight to the scene, trying to understand what had happened. Following the news of Ratzenberger's death, Senna talked to his friend and confidant, Professor Sid Watkins, the FIA's safety and medical delegate. Consoling a clearly emotional Senna, Watkins said, What else do you need to do? You've been world champion three times. You're obviously the quickest driver. Let's give it up and go fishing. Senna replied, I cannot quit. I have to go on. Following a restless night, Senna still remained uncertain of whether to race. His old foe, Alan Prost, remarked on how utterly different and indescribable Senna's mood was. Distracted and tense, he talked safety with Prost and wanted to reform the Grand Prix Drivers Association to help increase safety. He continued the same discussion with former teammate and good friend Gerhard Berger prior to the race. On the grid, he found a brief moment to smile from pole position when the crowd cheered for Ferrari and Berger saluting his old friend with a grin as he put his helmet on for what would be the final time. No sooner had the lights gone out and there was a shower of debris, some of which entered the grandstand and injured several spectators. JJ Leto had stalled his Benetton on the grid and had been hit from behind by Pedro Lamy's Lotus. The safety car was called into action, much to the frustration of Senna, who signalled for the safety vehicle to go quicker, as his Williams' tyres struggled for heat. Lap 6 and Senna was flat out at the restart, pursued by Schumacher as he rattled through Tambrello, something he had done hundreds of times before. As the Williams and Benetton passed the start finish straight as one to begin their seventh lap, the world of motorsport was about to change forever. Senna's Williams veered to the right of the left-hand Tamborella curve at 190 miles an hour, colliding with the concrete wall lining the outside of the track. The 
force of the impact caused the front right wheel to come into the cockpit, an errant piece of suspension fatally striking Senna in the head. As doctors surrounded the stricken Williams, Senna's motionless body was laid out on the track as his old friend Watkins stood over him. One of the greatest drivers to have raced in Formula 1 was gone. The exact cause of the accident will never be known. Was it a technical failure? Did the steering column break? Was it a slow deflating tyre? Perhaps Senna had pushed too hard and made a mistake, such was the pressure he was under. A sporting superstar was lost, but Senna's legacy has ensured F1 has been on a never-ending quest for safety ever since. <laughs>